Many greetings. This is uh, Apostle Keith McLeod and I am the leader of the Miracle Christian Centre Church International and the Rise of the Christian Super Soldier and we'll be telling you more about that in weeks to come. Well, Miracle Christian Centre, all our members and all our friends there, thank you for being a part of us and we love you very much and we just it's a joy to come to you and talk to you today from the scriptures well look what's happened look what is happening in our world and the the coronavirus is having such a massive negative effect on our society and our communities and in our whole lives and so I have a, a little teaching today that I think is very, very necessary and uh, it's called How to Preserve Your Job in These Difficult Times. How to Preserve Your Career, Your Jobs. Now you can see, and I can't call any names, uh, major corporations, major businesses are losing uh, their businesses and entering into negative neg negative equity losing uh, their, their opportunities losing uh, their whole business ethos losing all the functionality of it and most importantly losing uh, their money losing their profits and then hence people losing their jobs so God is looking after you is looking after his people and as I sp spoke a few weeks ago and on at our church that God will not allow the these angels or, and they're not say angels but in the prophecy and in the vision of Revelation chapter 6 he's not going to allow us to suffer in these times and so redundancy is going to be facing a lot of people and I'm not putting this to you for you to worry but I'm bringing the solution and from different ways from the Bible from scripture and also from personal experience and I used to be a, a senior manager I was a director of housing uh, one of the directors, we were called area directors at first, uh, then after a lot of devolution that means putting more responsibilities of money and personnel and HR and these sort of things and other things were loaded upon us, we were then called directors and I was director in a London borough, in the southern part of that borough and I had 43 staff and I also had the responsibility of looking after approximately just under 5,000 properties, each of which would have, say, two to three people living in. So you'd say that I'm responsible for 15,000 people with the, my staff working for me and as a whole unit serving our community from that particular point of view. And it so happened that the worst day of my life in working at that level was the day we were called by the chief executive and told that we had to let people go and we fought as hard as we could we looked at every which way not to lay anybody off but you know it was so sad and uh, I had to lay off nine people in my office and all the other directors had to do the same and we had to select and we had to make a decision who's going to go, which department do they go for. So there were ways in which we measured who should go and who should not go, who should be made redundant and who would stay. And it wasn't all about money. Money wasn't the, the thing. It was who do we have left? Who is available to stay and carry the load and take the extra load of those who've gone who are the faithful ones? Who are the hard workers? Who really cared about the, the office that I was leading? Who cared about me as the, the director? Who was really listening to what I was saying? Or who was really undermining or pretending to work and not really doing what 
I asked them to do as the director. So all this came into it. So it's from this area, and you might say, but, oh, I, I switched on today, Apostle, because I want a spiritual, I was sp feed me spiritually. Well, it is, because we have many examples in the Bible of people that worked hard, uh, some by stealth, like Jacob, uh, he had to work 14 years to marry the woman he wanted to have. He got tricked the first seven years uh, by his uncle. But then he came back and it, he, was, he became a trickster himself and he made a killing, in other words. He made a lot of money uh, from the, his uncle's business and then he got the wife that he wanted to marry, Rachel. And so, do we have other examples in the Bible? Yes, we do. We have Joseph. Now, Joseph is key, and I'd like you to do some homework, Miracle Christian Center people. I'd, li I'd like you to read that part of Genesis. I think it's in the latter part of Genesis, uh, chapter 36 or 39, right on to chapter 50, the last chapter. It's all about Joseph. And Joseph was a young man, and he, uh, his father saw that he had many gifts, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when he put the coat of many colors on, it, on him, showing his future, showing his gifts, and unfortunately, Joseph was a little bit of a show off. And he'll go and show the other brothers, oh, look what dad got me. And that just riled them up. That just made them envious and jealous. And they set out to kill him. And that's what they tried to do one day. And uh, really, Joseph had a, a series of steps in his life so that before he became the Chancellor of the, in fact, like a Prime Minister. So he, he started off just as a son and his brothers turned on him and they, that means we have a phrase for it, he was peopled. People won't actually like you, even at work, if you've got something special. So be careful how you conduct yourself at work at the moment. Don't talk about the boss. Don't talk about negatively about the, the procedures. Don't moan about one single thing because the competition's on right now and it just takes someone that you spoke to in private, really notice what they do. They talk to you and they say, oh, you know, the boss is this, the boss is that. And you're standing there, you don't say a single word, but they will go behind your back and tell the boss that you were talking about the boss and you'll lose your job. So be very careful, be very wise at this time and uh, get to work early. It's nine o'clock start. You know, when the lockdown comes, don't go in at one minute to nine. The bosses now are looking for reasons. Who's, who's eager? Eager beavers will be in at 8.30 because it's, we start at nine. And they'll be there making tea, reading the newspaper, whatever they do, and getting ready to start. And there's no rush about them. They are ahead of the game. They are they infused. They've got smiles on their faces. They've got... You know, everything about you now, check yourself how you're working at work and just, you know, engage yourself in, in a joyous day. No matter how rough it is, be at the top of your game, the top of your appearance. You know, everyone's got different ways of dressing these days. But I mean, appearance, just looking good on your face, always smiling, not being disappointed about anything. On the worst day at work, you're not going to complain. You're going to realize that you are going to be like Joseph. Joseph now, he was thrown, his brothers took him for a walk and they dug a pit and they were going to kill him or let him be eaten by wild animals. And his, the other brothers, one of the brothers said, no, we can't do this. We need, let him go. And they saw some slavers, uh, some people who were uh, trappers who took people as slaves and he was sold to them. So look at Joseph's life. He's with his dad. He's got a great promise of his future. He's going places. He's going to be the top of all the brothers. He's destined to be that. And that happens at work. You are destined to be great. You are destined for promotion. You're destined to go up to another level at work. As the years and the months go by, you've been chosen and your bosses are looking at you. And you, in other words, when they start looking at you, that means they're going to give you favor. There's a favor about them. They, there's something about you they see. And Joseph was like that. 
he was an innocent guy. He wasn't rude. He, he, but anything he touched, he made it turn to gold. And I don't mean physical gold. He just made it golden. He, he just improved things. And that terminology is, uh, we use this at work, that that person becomes resourceful. So resourcefulness is key to you staying in your job. What does a resourceful mean? If a person comes and asks me as a boss, I do the same in church, but not in the same measure or in the same reaction. But when you work in that professional place and someone, you say to someone, please, could you get me whatever? And they go and they look around the cupboard, they can't find it. And they come back to you say, oh, boss, I couldn't find it. I, can't, I, can't, I couldn't see it. And I said, well, go and have another look. They go in the cupboard and they said, oh, they're looking around. Oh, I don't see it. I, and they rush back panicky. I said, I, I couldn't find it, boss. And then you get up as the boss. You go in the cupboard. You yourself don't know where it is, but you'll look around more carefully from corner to corner, line to line, row to row. And there it is. That person who does like that is called a resourceful person. They do not come back with an empty hand. And even if you don't find what the boss will, wants you to get, you will go in that cupboard and find something better than what the boss is, wants. And that is called a resourceful person. So you must be very resourceful about things that you're doing at work right now. Keep a clear desk. No, don't have it all uh, because the boss is, if, the clarion call comes from the chief executive or the managing director saying, we've got to reduce staff because this is where this is heading. This happened in 2008. This happened in 1986. This happened in the 1990s, 1993, 94. What I'm talking about, I had to lay staff off because money wasn't coming to the councils in the same way. And we had to completely, central government, Parliament was not giving the councils the same sort of money and we were under pressure and I had to let nine people go. So look at Joseph, read his life and certain things happened to him. He is now in a pit and we call it the peas of the peas of Joseph. There's about eight of them, but I just pick on five. He was with his parents. He was peopled. Number one, you will be peopled. You are now in great competition. Don't trust anyone at your workplace, high or low. Don't trust anyone. Do your best at work. Make no comments about anyone or anything. Whatever the bosses have want, want to be done, get it done with glee and a smile on your face and in your heart. Because if, if a smile is not on your heart, it won't show on your face. It will be a full smile. And people, you know, people will pick that up. Then Joseph, he was now with he was now a slave and he was taken to Potiphar's house, who was a, a, a great man in society. He was up there, you know, he's like almost like an MP, that type of person, um, uh, like a lord, you know. And the thing about it, he was in that house and he was a slave. And uh, the thing about it was Potiphar, while he was at work, uh, his, wi his wife made a, you know, she made a, uh, she had a shine for, um, for, for Joseph and tried to seduce him. Joseph kept his honor before God and she grabbed him, took off all his clothes and he ran out. But before that happened, the Bible says that when uh, he was a slave in Potiphar's house, but they noticed that the integrity of Joseph, that everything he did was, it was just different. If he had to shine a pot, that pot you know, with the sun blowing in or shining, it was it was almost brighter. And I'm not exaggerating my words, but I've got to explain what I mean. It was it was almost sh shinier than the sun. Everything he did when he cleaned the floor, it was so clean. It was above clean, and that is called a resourceful person, and that is called a person of of integrity. And a, and bosses, your boss. Even if they hate your guts, for whatever reason they hate your guts, they haven't spoken to you, but they just look at you and hate your guts. When they see that when you do something, or if you go to get to, like I've got in front of me, I've got cameras in front of me and there's a tripod, he, you know, he looks at that and says, wow, the tripod is so clean. Wow, you, you know, just everything you've done is so perfect, so right, your boss, 
will not let you must not do the average anymore you mustn't do just enough because when decisions will be made to lay people off in different companies pray for your company of course that no one will be laid off but you must be above and beyond your colleagues and that must be made noticeable so don't tell anybody at your work about any new idea you have that you have an idea for the company they will steal it they will present it to the boss as their idea and they will be promoted and you'll be left on the shelf or you know it could be bad news of redundancy so i'm encouraging you now to continue and be like joseph and joseph now he was chucked in prison because uh, Potiphar's wife, she lied on him. He went into he went into prison, and while he's in, and you know, prison is nothing like what you don't get a television, you don't even get a toilet back those days. They threw some straw in, and you lived, you did all your stuff on the straw, and you know, it was n no lights in those prisons, maybe a candle that will burn out. It was terrible with cockroaches and rats, and the Bible says that Joseph. He cleaned everything. He organized that so much. The jailers, they opened his jail, his prison, you know, his actual room. And he actually came and organized all the stuff, you know, like, let's put it in that today's terminology. He looked at all the books. He wrote, rewrote things. He wrote procedures. He set out when a new prisoner comes in, how they should be greeted, how to deal. And they, Joseph was in charge of the prison. And this is what I'm saying to you. Look at yourself at work. Don't just go to work to do your day's work. But and the, the word we use now is resourcefulness. But the most important word that we look for in interviews. Now I did many, many interviews at you know at, at ordinary level staff, mid, middle management staff, and also for senior managers. I've sat on uh, panels to interview people who were becoming directors and those types of people. And what you look for in your staff or a new, someone to win at an interview. So this also includes at an interview. We've got to look at Joseph. We've got to do it like he did. He had a specialism of added value. Say that word with me, add it value. If you get a pen, write these words down. Resourcefulness, as I've already explained, looking in the cupboard and other people can't find it, but you'll find it. And so, and also be able to have added value. He's in prison, he goes in the prison and he reorganizes the prison. The jailers, they didn't have to even have, you know, walk around with clubs and swords because Joseph was in charge. He brought peace to the prison. He made the other prisoners feel cool. They didn't have to go through pressure. Oh, is the jailer gonna beat me up today? No, Joseph brought peace. And so when the inspectors came, right, the jailers got the praise, but the jailers knew it was Joseph and they thanked him for it and they gave him special status. That's what will happen. But that is what is called added value. He didn't just come and sit in the jail and moan, oh, here I am today, another day. He looked at the opportunity. What can I do with this mess and turn it into a success? That was Joseph. And that's what you have to do to preserve your job. Because when your bosses are looking around, whatever they're looking around for, uh, you can't say, well, they didn't like my color and this. We've got to get past that. We can't say, well, because he, the boss didn't like me. You can win. You must be a winner now. You've got to turn this around. And I'm going to give you some examples what happened in my own life. So I'm not speaking, notice I'm not speaking from a textbook. I'm speaking from personal experience experience and I know how this runs and I know how bosses think at this particular time some don't know what to do but bosses may have to cut numbers but you will not be cut in Jesus name I prophesy that over you you're, you're giving to the Lord your tithes and offerings and these things God will look after you the angels of finance will protect you in your employments I want you to be at peace at this hour I don't want you to be troubled the Lord says let not your heart be troubled that's why we're teaching weeks ago that the end is not yet don't worry this will turn 
in our favor and in your favor. Hallelujah. Whatever happens in the world and people may lose out, you will not lose out. Hallelujah. And so with Joseph, he went on and many of you know the story. He, he, he met, he was a man who could see and hear from God. And that's the key. You need right through this time in your lives, have a good practice. If you're not practicing at this at the moment, I'm calling all MCCI members, Miracle Christian Center, International Church members, and, and the Rise of the Christian Super Soldier members, I'm asking you that one day a week you fast. You fast, you put away food, and don't just fast and, you know, come and have a, you know, a storm in Norman belly full at six o'clock in the evening. You need to fast from you wake up in the morning right up to midnight and ask God to keep your employment, keep your jobs, keep your, you've got to make that kind of pushy sacrifice right now and put the food aside for one day and say, God, keep us. Right. Now, from there, he became in the jail and there was the king's servant, one was a butler and a baker, and they did some bad things and the king shut them up in jail for a long time. And then in the end, they both had dreams. And in the end, they didn't know what it meant. But Joseph, who was also the interpreter of dreams, he told them what it's gonna, what's going to happen to them. And within a very quick time, it happened. One, he said, would die and be executed, and the, and the other, he said, you're going to be reinstated. But when you're reinstated, please tell, please tell the boss, please tell the, the pharaoh, the king, that I was the one who done it. And that's what I'm telling you. You'll have a good idea. Share it with somebody, and they promise you they're going to, you know, tell, get you promoted, but they don't. And that's exactly what happened to Joseph. So Joseph had to stay in the prison, even though he was like the king of the prison, he had to stay longer. And what did God do? See, God will look after us. God will intervene for you. God will speak to the highest authority about you. When everybody forgets you, God will turn things around for you. And that's what happened to Joseph. And God then now sets it up for uh, the king to have a dream and he, couldn't remember the dream, but he was tormented. And so, he, the, he, you know, he's going out of his mind, walking around his Paris and saying, oh, wait, what? I can't remember the dream. I can't even sleep now. I'm troubled. But then one of the guys, the baker or the butler, who was freed up, they said, oh, do you know what? I was in the prison a couple of years ago. And there's this young guy down there. His name's Joseph. He just organizes things and the Spirit of God is with him. Now, that's what you've got to realize. The Spirit of God is with you. And the people around you know the Spirit of God's with you. Your boss knows. They can't say what it is, but they know you've got something special because you're Christian. And you've got God's anointing. You've got God's presence. You've got his love. You don't, you never get in trouble at work. You know, you're doing the best. They know they can call on you. And so, because you're faithful. And that's why they won't get rid of you because you're faithful and you're bringing added value. You always try to improve something, something simple. And you come up with an idea to make it different. And that will keep you in your job. Amen. I have a, someone in my family and uh, we grew up together as you know, young kids, uh, same sort of age. And uh, he used to muck about at school, never took it seriously. His, his side of family, they emigrated, they went somewhere. And when he, when he em they were emigrated, sold up their home and got their money, went back from where they came from. He, of course, uh, he found it all very difficult because of a different society, different lifestyle. And he decided to go and study. This kid who wouldn't even read a book and uh, just not go, getting on well in his school class here in this country. And he decided to go and study and then he ended up in a university overseas from the country he was where the family was. And he did really well. Then he got a job, a quite, quite a low-level job in a company, 
in dealing with printing. They were, it was called Xerox printing and that's all he was doing. And he was sitting there with the machines and he had more or less one of the, you know, the lower level jobs in that organization. But one day he told me he was looking at this machine and he was saying to himself, I could improve this process. And what he did, he went and saw, spoke to the supervisor and they tried it. And every, it's a big company. Every month they were saving a hundred thousand uh, US dollars, it's US, I didn't want to say the country, but 100,000 US dollars. In other words, the business was making 100,000 dollars a month profit. What do you think they did with him? They took him from where he was sitting because he brought added value. He just, a little simple thing. And it literally, you know, in a year they're making a million dollar saving and they're making bigger business from him. They took him and they shift him up. It's, he jumped the supervisor position and they took him into junior management. Became a manager and now the sky's the limit. And that's what I saw. I went to his home and he was in the a different region in California. And I went to his home and it was a six bedroom bungalow with stables. And across the road, there were cowboys, you know, with horses. It was just a different life because he didn't, he had an idea. But you got, can't share the idea with anyone because they'll steal it from you. But he made sure it got to the right levels and they promoted him. And till this day, he's doing very well. Now, I had a similar experience. I worked for, uh, as a director, I worked in a situation and before I became a director, I wasn't that, I was a junior. It was just on one side of A4, one side of A4. And I went, I'm very bold. You've got to be bold in life, be bold. I didn't go and share it with the next bosses up. I went and asked for an interview with one of the senior directors. And when I did that, I had this interview with one of the senior directors. You know what happened? Um, he sat down, he looked at it, and he got up from his desk, and I'm sitting in the seat in front of his desk. He got up, turned his back to me, walked to the window, because, you know, it was, it was on a high rise with all the, all the senior directors and the chief executive, not, not um, uh, the executive directors are, and he put his hand, I always remember, he put his hand on the window, scratched his head, turned around, smiled at me, sat down and said, oh my goodness, this is what we've been looking for. And he said, you know what, we're going to make this a pilot, because I have a small office, at your office and see how we go. My brothers and sisters, this is what happened. There was an incident that happened where I was working on the estate. Remember, I look after housing. Exactly fitted the, the procedure and to deal with a certain type of emergency. And guess what happened? I called the press because it was big. It was national. And I called the press and they came and took pictures of what I'd written up and it was amazing. In fact, I'm not afraid I can say it, it was called the Vulnerable Tenants Procedure. The Vulnerable Tenants Procedure came from little me and my little team. It projected us because things were going bad and heads were going to roll. And I think what I mean is people at the top level were going to lose their jobs because no one had an answer to a particular problem. And here I was, like little Joseph, and I came with this idea. After that, I was hallmarked. I didn't know. I was hallmarked. They'd hallmarked me to become a director in the future. They start to send me on special management courses. And I was picked out. 
And then I was taken aside by some of these directors and they told me that we have hallmarked you. You're, you, you're, you've got something special. But I never said a word to my colleagues or my friends or anything like that. Then I was given, I was given special uh, projects to do. And I was given some special projects secretly to do that people didn't even know. And it tested my mettle even more and, I, and they, that set me on the course. My brothers and sisters, this is what I'm telling you, this is what Joseph did. This is what you must now do at your work. But don't go in there on Monday or when you go in from a lockdown. Don't show your difference yet. Show it through your work. Don't show it through your outward appearance, except for your joyous and great to be back at work and your enthusiasm about things. But when you've got something, an idea, don't talk to other people because they're jealous of you, envious of you, and they will destroy you. So this is my definite, definite talk to you today. I'm not quite finished, but and I'm going to pray for you because your, your job is preserved. Amen. Now, let me tell you something a little bit extra now because I think some of you or people that you know may be going through this. And you giving to the Lord the way you're giving. And remember, I'm not in here begging for money. I'm saying you give to the Lord the way you do. And God is going to look after you. Uh, before I was a director, I was here in this home that you'll see, see me sitting. We just moved in. We just moved in. And uh, in three months after we moved in, Guess what happened? I received a redundancy letter and that I couldn't believe it. I, and it came at Christmas. It's an awful thing. And I remember, I didn't cry about it. I said, well, here we go. Here we go again because this, the first house, we had some difficulties when we were there. And all I can say to you as your leader, I carry this anointing I carry this presence, I carry this experience, I carry this word by the grace of God that you will make it. This will not take you down. This COVID period, which I told you and God had me to prof prophesy about at church before it, it really came to true reality. I said, this thing is going to take affect the finances, the banks, and watch out for your banks, please. Uh, you've got to think if you've got more than £85,000, I'm not, I'm not your banker, but you've got to think if you've got more than £85,000 in any bank, that's, that's all you're insured for. That bank, if any bank crashes in this period, and you know we can't sit back and say no bank will crash because in 2008, banks crashed. Bank, the government bailed out one or two, but did not bail out Northern Rock. And so you need to look at your monies. Make sure that you do not have more than 85000 And then you might say, well, I'm going to lose my interest. Well, I got a bank uh, letter just the other day, and they were saying, oh, they're dropping the interest from one, one, uh, from one uh, percentage, from 1.0%. They're dropping it. It's on my savings account. They're dropping it to 0.1%. See, so the banks are not going to give us anything. The banks are not for us. They only use our money. And so you, you can't be loyal to them if you've got 200,000 in the, in the bank and they crash. The government, the financial uh, institutions, you know, the governing bodies that monitor them will only insure uh, 85,000 to you and you will lose the rest of the money. If that bank doesn't come back or it merges, you no guarantee. So I'm saying these things to you. This is a practical day and I think this is spiritual. Money is spiritual. Money is not carnal. Money and jobs are not carnal. It's spiritual. Paul the Apostle says if a man doesn't work, they should not live they should not you know if the man won't work they they, sh they can't get on so work is a part of what we have to do there is work in heaven when we get to heaven when we get over to glory land there is work there so joseph what did he do he 
was an, he brought added value. And so that added value, and he had, do you know what he really had most of all? Was integrity. He had honesty, integrity, and he kept to what God had given him. And he never one time, he never complained. And so if you're complaining, stop complaining, because that just puts more pressure on you. Don't talk about people. Don't gossip because, as I always say, when you gossip, you only, you're taking a sip of poison yourself and you don't need that right now. We all need peace and we all need the joy of the Lord, which is our strength to come into our lives. So let me just re repeat some, let me just uh, re recap here. It's very important for you that you pray and fast one day a week to keep your job, keep, keep you up there. Satan's, Satan's gang are plotting and to remove us because this world doesn't like us. But with our angels, with fasting and prayer and our blessing, you're going to make it in Jesus' name. So be resourceful, be motivated and most of all, added value. Because when you've got added value, you will not be called in for that horrible interview that I had to do years ago for, I think it's eight or nine people, I had to sit them down. I've never forgot it. I, I, it hurts in my heart when I think about it, but it's something that bosses have to do. But you will not be chosen in Jesus Christ's name. You will prosper, you will do well, and you will, God will preserve your position. Amen. So the last thing I want to say to you, uh, as I put my notes down, I received the redundancy notice. I never had, it was an awful feeling. And they said to me, my job that I had, I have to be downgraded. That's the only way they're going to keep me. My salary is going to drop quite a big way. I've got to take a lower job. Huh? Can you imagine? Now, that expression I gave you, that's how I was inside. I was a bit annoyed, yeah? And they wanted to downgrade me, and there were 16 others of us at a certain level. We were seniors, and there was a drop back. All the work we'd done was going to be lost. So we spoke to the unions, we went to union meetings, and not just us, but right across the board, you know, many of us were going to lose our jobs and we had to get lower jobs. And that was the idea when the, what was called the customer service officer. We were the first to have it. Customer service officers was created um, where we are with one other council. And here we were. I probably have to lose the house. We might just hold on. We don't know. But it was very difficult times. Now, what did I do? I went into fasting and prayer. I fasted three days, no food. I said, God, you're going to help me to turn around. I went to work and didn't have a drink. I had no food because I needed God the answer. Now, please remember, please remember that they had asked me to do certain tasks, special things, and it was great, but they, were, they had no mercy because the pressure was on. But fasting and prayer, talking to the Lord about it. The old song used to say, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him about your trouble. He'll hear your faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. And you know what? The unions, we used to have a, a word about the unions. They were, weren't working for us. They were working with management, senior management. So what do you think I did? What do you think I had to do? I got very bold and I went to senior management on my own. Remembering, you, this is called wisdom. Because they worked with me, because they dealt with me, because they've done things with me in the past, I, I had them in a position of saying, this is not fair. And I actually said, I sat before this particular leader in that job, one of the senior 
people. I said, look, do you remember that when we were all in trouble, when this organisation was in trouble, I sat down with my staff and we came up with the idea that saved everybody. He put his head down and he says, that's true. I said, now listen, people who, who, were, who were in my grade were more experienced than me. Everyone's crying. Everyone, I, I don't have time for that. I got bold. Even, I was a preacher then, so I put on my preaching gown. That's what I did. And I went and saw them at a high level. I said, you can't do this to us. So I turned around. He says, we were looking for this. He said to me, leave it with me, Keith. I'll see what we can do. By Monday, I saw him on the Friday, by Monday, an uh, email, a memo went out saying that the people at my level, I included, we are not going to be uh, placed in a downgrade, but they're going to give us a chance to go, they, they were reorganising, restructuring, there's a new level called a tenancy service manager, Now that was good money. Hallelujah. That was good money. That was a, you know, a big jump. Not a step down, but a big jump. Now, we've got to see it. It's in the same times like we have now. Same times of uncertainty. But you have to be a Joseph. You've got to be resourceful. You've got to have joy and motivation about you. And you must have added value. Think of something you can do at your current workplace that nobody's thought of. It might be just something so simple, but it will create a difference. So I was able to rely on the added value that I brought in and I put it back on the table. I said, you can't, shouldn't be getting rid of me like this. Have you forgotten the trouble that everybody was in? And I brought this to the table for the vulnerable tenants procedure. Yeah? And he said, the memo came out and gave us this offer. And guess what? I was interviewed for this job and it was a tough interview system. It was the beginning of what was called the assessment centre, which is now common. But it was eight hours of test at a level that I had not, I'm no real anywhere near. Guess what happened? I took the test. And guess what happened? I passed. I'm not, I'm not boasting. Guess what happened? Out of the 16 of us, I was the only one that passed. I'm trying to say to us, when God is with you, when God is for you, no man, no power, no demon, no government, no conspiracy can outdo you. And that's what happened to me. Praise the Lord. And so they place me now. All of a sudden, salary's gone up. I've got authority at another level. I've got bigger amount of staff to deal with, which I was scared about. I wasn't very good at staff yet, but I had to learn the hard way. Guess what happened? Nine months later, I'm tenancy services manager. And my staff staff just worked for me. Well, oh God, they worked their socks, socks off because people knew I was blessed. In fact, it went right through the whole organization. It's, they said, it was said, when I passed that exam, they said in the whole organization, they said, they said these words. They said, Keith, you are, they said, God is with him. That's what they were saying, God is with him. And I never told, everybody said God was with him. Even atheists said God's with him. People who have different religions said God's with him. Everybody said God is with him. And I got the job. But nine months later, and I'm encouraging you, not showing off on you, just be resourceful. Just be motivated. Be proactive. Be adaptable in any kind of scenario you find yourself added value, joyous, it works. Nine months later, 
I was ringing one of the senior directors again and uh, about something and I said okay bye he said no 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 oh no 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 can I talk to you he's on the phone I want you to come and see me I thought oh gosh I'm in trouble you don't go and see these senior directors unless you might be in trouble but I'm still junior he says oh I want to let you know I want to let you know that we we took on eight directors, area directors. In fact, they call us area managers at first. We took on air, eight we were area managers, but we now we're creating eight, nine directors. And we have, they've recruited for eight. And he, he said to me, I don't know if you notice, we haven't filled one of them. I said, yeah, it's been going on six months now. He says, he says, he says, Keith, it's all because we've been watching you. I said, what do you mean you've been watching me? He says, we've just been watching you, how you would do as a Tennessee services manager because the weight of it was so great and now they threw budgets on me of six, you know, at that point, where I was in that particular office of nearly two million pounds. I've never looked after at the time, anything like, uh, you know, 50,000 in my life. Where is that? You know, two million. And then we're watching you to see how you would do. And he said, he said, I said, why did you still, why are you still, you know, asking me to do this job as, as a director? He says, I'm asking you to do this director's job because when you took the, the test and the interviews at, for the tenancy services manager, of those 16 people, they said your results were so high, it was higher than going for a director's interview. And you see, my friends, I'm saying to you, when the Lord is with you, when the Lord chooses you to do great things, no one can stop it. When God's blessings are on you, when God's hand is on you, no one can move God's hand. No one can curse you when God is blessing you, when God is pouring on you. That's why many of you came to Miracle Christian Center International. We're not the only church like this, but you're with us. So we talk personally to you. I'm in your front room with you right now. I'm, I'm with you in your kitchen talking to you. This is a one-on-one -on -one with you. I'm saying to you, hang around. I'm saying the blessing of God is in this ministry. The blessing is coming because I have experience. I'm not talking from a textbook. I've lived this. And so... They, I was the first director. And not only this, I want to I say this without being any color prejudice or, you know, that sort of thing. I was the first black, I was the first person of color to be a director at that level. First the area director and they changed it because they do you know there's so much devolution they put all the more money into our pockets with more responsibilities all the personnel which was no longer center was at my local office and they we became directors and it was there after four years of doing that i gave it all up financially i was fantastic they gave me an extra ten thousand every f four years yeah, every four years to buy a brand new car on top of my salary. My salary had up to another 20% performance related pay on top of my big salary. I'm trying to say to you, when God is going to bless you, no one can curse you. I'm saying this time of the season of COVID-19, I speak the blessing that you will not be removed from your employment hallelujah, that God will preserve you. I send the authority of the directorship anointing that I have, that you will become added value, that you will be resourceful, that you will be self-motivated, that you will be adaptable, that you will be proactive, that you will be a special 
person in your workplace. The light of God is going to shine on you. The bosses and the supervisors, well, not some of the supervisors, you need above that. The bosses above the supervisors are going to shine on you because supervisors can be wicked and hold you down. But those above the supervisor are there for the business. They want the best. And I declare that you are nothing but the best. You are the best. In Jesus' name, I bless you. I send angels of finance and angels of promotion to make the way, to part the waves for you and that you will prosper and be in health. Remember to fast. Remember that, please. That's key. Amen. And any of you that have been made redundant over the last months and before this started, I speak the blessing of where jobs may be scarce, but you will have a breakthrough. You will have a breakthrough. You will have a breakthrough. I speak in this time where people are in confusion. I speak that you will be promoted because you see the confusion is the time where those who are not confused will stand up and be seen. So you are not confused and you are not fearful. I break every spirit of fear off your lives that you will not fear what is coming into the earth. My brothers and sisters, the end is not yet. There's going to be some peace. This too will pass. I bless you in Jesus' name. Please look out for us next week and also our Bible school. And I promised you last week that we'll have something special coming this week. But I'm asking you to leave it for another week because we're just getting it fine-tuned. And we'll have it for you next week in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, I decree that this is the day of your prosperity. I decree, Father, that this is the day you have made. I decree that as you are blessing this nation, that this thing is passing over us now. We decree that there will be no new spiking of it, Lord, because the pressure will be on employers that they will have to let people go. God, we ask this to be shut down now. We ask for the blessing. I speak as an apostle over the nation that this changes now and that God will be glorified in this season. Preserve your people. Let the oil and the wine cannot be touched by the, the horsemen of the black horse and the red horse of famine and to take away peace out of the earth. God, we rebuke the spirit of fear that is in our atmospheres. And Lord, we speak faith. We speak believing. We speak joy. We speak peace. In Jesus' name, Jesus says, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, but my peace. His peace receive now in Jesus' wonderful name. Now, if any of you want to have a one-on-one -on -one with me with regards to jobs or anything, because obviously this has stirred up a lot of interest and you need to know how to get through an interview, maybe you're going for a promotional interview, you can call me. But the, you're going to have to, uh, we'll put a number on the screen at this point as I'm speaking. It'll come up and you, that's the number you can call on. God bless you, keep you, and may his face continue to shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.